it's it's pretty overwhelming here uh, in New York City, um, sort of the epicenter of the COVID pandemic. Um, uh, it, it's overwhelming in a lot of ways and, and a lot of things that have changed in, in the way we have done things, um, both in the inpatient side and critical care and also in palliative care. But, um, you know, the camaraderie and the way uh, people have come together in New York is extraordinary. So um, a lot of support too. feels different. The, the um, urgency and importance of, of bringing the family in this way because they're not physically there makes it that much more important. So on Easter Sunday in this Queens Hospital, which is all COVID, uh, four or 500 COVID patients and a couple, maybe a hundred or so intubated COVID patients, we're in a patient's room and I wanted to do a virtual visit because this was an 88-year-old patient who was uh, with renal failure on a ventilator, uh, paralyzed with a medication to paralyze them so they wouldn't move, so they would synchronize with the ventilator better. And the son and daughter who lived in separate states wanted to see their father. So I, I got all gowned up and ready to go into the room and the two nurses that were there were just about ready to bathe him and clean the sheets and do all this stuff. And they were a bit irritated with me that I wanted to do this visit right now, but it's hard to know what's going on in the room when you're out of the room. and. So the timing wasn't ideal, but I finally got in there with this iPad and the daughter was waiting for the call first. So I didn't want to keep her waiting. So she got to say uh, some words to her father who was dying, but, but not acutely, but she really wanted to pray and say some words with him. So she had a very meaningful visit with him. Well, these two nurses are sort of watching. They had not seen this before. Then I hung up with her and did a second call with her brother and her brother was saying an Easter prayer with this patient who's again uh, sedated, uh, paralyzed with a medication on a ventilator and, and saying to his father, you, you can go now to your parents, they're calling you. It's okay, dad. And it was very moving. Uh, the nurses started to get teary. It was a very moving moment actually. And I left the room um, and I started uh, taking everything off, doffing all of my equipment and gear and everything. And the nurse came over to the door and she's like, Dana, Dana, he just went asystolic, uh, meaning he had just died. And and we had had a DNR discussion and, that, and so we weren't going to resuscitate, but it was so interesting how that timing was so important. And I didn't expect him actually to die at that moment. I thought he had a day or two left, but just maybe hearing his son's words or his son giving him permission to see his parents but it was really moving and the staff was just very teared up. And it was, we all had to take a pause for a minute and, and throughout the whole day, we hadn't really done that before, but it was really a, a, an important thing for the son and daughter. And it was really powerful for the staff.